April is Armenian Heritage Month for LA County and we are paying tribute here at KTLA by shining a light on the people who are making a positive impact. KTLA's Alina Bovian joins us now uh, with a story on a real Hollywood trailblazer. That's Alina, right good guys, morning. good morning. Well, thanks for having me. You know, you know the saying, if you meet your idols, be careful because they just might end up disappointing you. Right. Well, that was not the case with Steve Papazian. I had the pleasure of meeting him recently, and he is just the most humble person despite having this massive career. He invited us into his home and allowed me to share his story. Take a look. I think this is that really sweet actor. What's his name? Greg? Uh, Kinnear. Kinnear. That's yeah. Greg. Look how young he is. A day with Steve Papazian is a trip down movie memory lane. He's Hollywood royalty and looking around his home office, it's an homage to his legacy. <laughs> 570 movies under his tutelage as president of production for Warner Brothers Studios, a career he launched in the 60s. It all started his senior year at CSUN. Papazian worked as a tour guide for Universal. Then, like his dad, he joined the Navy and was drafted during the Vietnam War. And when I got out, my dad said, come on, work with us. He had a market and a deli and a restaurant and that kind of thing. And I said, no, nah, it's not going to be for me. I want to I want to be in showbiz. <laughs> It was 1968, the Warner Brothers mailroom, a time when Hollywood felt more like a family. There wasn't as much separation, so a grip was could could be a friend of an actor. That actor for him was then movie star Robert Mitchum, who invited Papazian on an unforgettable trip to Mazatlan. Here's this gigantic yacht in the harbor, and there's John Wayne, drink in his hand and a cigarette here. And we played gin, and I played really well. Took some money from John Wayne, much to his dismay. They played hard, and they worked hard. Papazian was drawn to the business side, first in TV for shows like Growing Pains and Night Court. Then came the chance to make movies. I've been waiting my life for that. He became the money guy, the guy who could say no, and he did it with grace, balancing art with commerce. Having greenlit movies like The Matrix and Harry Potter, he was a whiz on the logistics side. I had a chance to work with Chris Nolan, I mean, Clint Eastwood. Papazian wasn't born into the biz, but he was destined for it, inspired early on while growing up in North Hollywood. As a little boy, Sherry Sarkeesian lived down the street, and she became Cher. And just like Cher, Papazian is an Armenian too, the son of Jerry Papazian and Virginia Albarian, whose families immigrated to the States right before the genocide. They knew times were changing and it was not going to be um, very kind to Christianity in the, in the neighborhood. A few summers ago, Papazian took the trip of a lifetime. He went to Armenia for the first time. I went there to honor my parents, grandparents. Look at the sacrifices. The family he was born into and the family he created is what Papazian is most proud of. A fruitful life, a success story, fit for the big screen. And this is uh, the stuff we used to do. You don't get to do that stuff, I don't think, quite as much as these days. And my favorite part of this interview, I asked Mr. Propazian, you know, what advice would you have for the younger generation? He said, whatever job you have, just do it really, really well, and the right person will take notice. And that's certainly what happened to him time and time again. He just did a really good job. What a yeah, lovely he's highly man. highly respected man, yeah. Yeah, what a great story.